Hello people, I'm Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new video. So in today's video, we're going to do 8085 programming. This is the third video we are making of programming of 8085. We saw initial programs of adding two numbers, subtracting two numbers. Of course, everybody starts with that. Block transfers, exchanges, inverted block transfers, finding the highest in a series, DAA program, that is BCD addition, all that is done. Today's video, we are doing two big programs. I don't want to use the word complex. Programming is not complex. Programming is fun. If you know how to do it, if you know how to work your way around instructions, programming is fun. Today's programs are multiplication and division. Yes, a lot of students have been requesting me for this. Uh, they think, sir, multiply program will be tough. No, it's not tough. Yes, ATAD5 doesn't have a multiply instruction or a divide instruction. So we need to write a program for it, for each one of them. So we're going to be doing these two programs today. Uh, when it comes to multiplication, let's say our two numbers are stored at location 2000 and 2001. We're going to take the two numbers, multiply them. When you multiply two 8-bit numbers, the answer is 16 bits. We're going to store the result at location 2002 and 2003 following the principle lower byte, lower address, which means lower byte will come at location 2002 and higher byte will come at 2003. How are you going to do it? Multiplication is nothing else but repeated additions. We're going to take one number, keep adding it, the second number, number of times. 5 into 4 is basically 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, right? One very important check that most people forget and then they come out of the exam thinking, yes, I've written a perfect program and the result comes, they get 4 out of 10 or 5 out of 10 because there's something very important you fail to check. What is that? Zeros. You need to check whether your numbers are zeros or not. When we give this programs in practicals and we are checking this, what a student has done, they very proudly show their program and we run the program. They expect us to enter big numbers. Yes, the biggest inputs are FF and FF and the answer should be FE01. Yes, everybody prepares for that. But they don't <laughs> prepare for the fact that the examiner will come and enter a zero. If any of your two operands are zero, your program should not do any of your multiplication process, obviously, and should directly come out with a graceful result of zero. Zero into anything is not a random number. Zero into anything is zero. So you should still get a zero result without really doing the process. So for each of the two operands, you need to do zero checking. Our program, of course, will do that. Not just multiply. The next program that we're going to do will be division. Again, two numbers stored at 2000 and 2001. This is the dividend, this is the divisor. We're going to divide them. We will get a quotient and a remainder, which we'll store at 2002 and 2003. What is division? Repeated subtractions. I have seven apples. I want to divide it between two students. What do I do? Keep subtracting the divisor from the dividend till the dividend becomes less than the divisor. So seven minus two, five minus two. 3 minus 2, 1. I cannot subtract further. 3 times I did the subtraction, 3 is my quotient. 1 apple remains, that is the remainder. That's the algorithm, that's the process we're going to do. What's the key thing? What did I tell you some time back? We need to check for 0. When you do division, the check is more crazy. If your dividend is 0, I have 0 apples. Guess how many will the students get? 0. So zero is the quotient and of course zero is the remainder because I had zero apples. So obviously I will be remaining, the remaining apples will be zero, right? The most serious one is which the examiner will cut marks heavily if you've not checked because that will result in hanging your computer is to see whether the divisor is zero or not. You don't do that check, you're going to get into serious trouble. Anything divided by zero cannot be performed. If you do that, what is the result? Infinity. What does that mean in the program? I'll do 7 minus 0, minus 0, minus 0. What did I say? When do we stop? When the dividend becomes less than the divisor. That will never happen because 7 is never decrementing. That means your loop will go into an infinite loop. Your program will hang. What will you get? 0. <laughs> so that should not happen. So you're going to check. If the dividend is 0, the result should be 0. If the divisor is 0, the result should be undefined and the program should stop immediately. Not store a zero result, undefined result. That means the result should be garbage because the division by zero is a garbage result. Are we clear? We're going to do all the checks and write perfect programs that will give you 10 out of 10. That was the introduction. This whole video will be there on my website www.bharatacharyaeducation.com. All you need to do is come on my website, register yourself as a user. Uh, there is a fee, of course there will be, that's the only way this whole exercise will be fruitful for everybody including us, for us to even do this. 
uh, we have kept the fee extremely low, something that the poorest students can afford. At the same time, the operation is viable for us. The moment you make your payment, immediately the site will open up for you. You can watch all the videos. What else do you get? You not only get the videos, the latest current videos, you also get PDFs with every video. What we keep doing in the background is we keep updating those PDFs. So if at all there is an error, there is always a possibility of a typing error, human error, things like that. Or if I feel like adding some new points, we keep updating them. So what you have is the latest answers. You have PDFs of Viva questions where we keep adding more questions. You have PDFs of MCQ questions again where we keep updating and adding more questions as and when we can. And most importantly, you have access to me. Whenever you have a doubt, my WhatsApp number, everybody knows. <laughs> It's there. I will be displaying it right now. All you need to do is just hit me up. Tell me, sir, I'm a subscriber of the so-and-so course I've taken. And that's it. Whatever your doubts are there, humanly as much as possible, I reply. Uh, I generally send audio replies. It's easier and faster for me. If there are some pictures or images or uh, PDFs I need to send, I send those. So that's the way. That's the honest, correct way of learning. Hope to see you there. Wish you all the best. Do well.